Hello, first violins. This is the discussion video for Hall of the Mountain King. Um, it's only got one side of little notes here, so hopefully we will get through it quickly. Um, first thing I want to talk about is these pizzicatos at the beginning, uh, really all the way up until what, like <laughs> 42. Um, everyone needs to be louder because this piece was written with the fact, uh, with a thought in, the, in mind that you would have at least 12 firsts and 12 second violins and maybe 10 or 12 violas and 8 or 10 cellos. Um, so it's meant for a much larger orchestra and that's what the dynamics are written for is a much larger orchestra. I'm not sure that you have 12 or 16 people in your entire orchestra. Definitely, you, <laughs> you cannot be playing a full orchestral piano like the pianissimo when there's only three people playing the part. This is like what I'm getting from you right now. Is my microphone even picking it up? I don't know. Um, so you've got to play a little louder. Because uh, I have problems hearing you when I'm standing like five feet away from you in the rehearsal room uh, Nobody is ever gonna hear you in the concert hall if you play like that so Make sure that just all of your pizzicatos are louder. I don't care that they're marked pianissimo. They need to be heard <laughs> so um, So just make sure That you're playing the right notes and that they are being heard also, let's talk proper pizzicato technique. Um, I think a lot of you are just plucking the string wherever. Um, and the, the rule of thumb for pizzicato and, and basically for like bow, arco versus pits is, um, you know how your bow always stays in between the bridge and the fingerboard? It might drift a little over the fingerboard. Um, you're always going to pit where your bow never goes. So anything um, farther up the fingerboard, this is pizzicato territory. Anything closer to the bridge is bow territory. Do not put your fingers there. Um, for the same reason that you don't touch the bow hair or try to wipe rosin off with your fingers, um, the, the moisture, the oils, and, and just general moisture from your hands reacts with the rosin dust to form like almost like a cement compound that will like never leave. It just ruins things. Um, so if you pluck where the rosin is on your strings, you are contributing to like killing the tone of that string because it's just caking on this rosin finger oil gunk that will like never come off. So when you are plucking, um, anchor your thumb against the corner of your fingerboard. You don't have to like dig it in, don't hurt yourself, but just anchor it there so your finger isn't floating around, your hand isn't like totally floating around in space, pecking like a chicken. Um, anchor your thumb and then reach your first finger out over the fingerboard so you get a nice round warmed sound from your strings as opposed to it's just I hope the microphone can pick up the difference in sound quality it's it's just like gross over here this is my crappy old violin um, with strings that are a gazillion years old, which is the only reason I am demonstrating improper pizzicato technique <laughs> on it. Um, I would never do this on my good violin. I'm gonna let that ambulance go by. Okay, now that you can maybe hear me again, um, make sure that all of these half notes all these arco half notes start up bow i know they are marked down bow i'm making the executive decision to not do that anymore um, because second violins and violas 
occasionally have to, um, well, you even have it, um, 21 into 22, playing a down bow. Uh, you, like, you're going, you're pulling your hand farther away from the instrument, only you have to circle around to pluck again. Um, so it's kind of silly. So if you start them up bow around the middle of the bow, you can still get the forte piano. moving your hand closer to the instrument so it's already right here to pluck. Um, even though you don't have to pluck um, in measures 14 and 18, other people do and it's going to look really silly if half the orchestra is going up bow and the other half is going down bow and it, it's weird. So everybody's half notes are going to be up bow from now on. Um, this will be the the real um, the real illuminating thing uh, if if people didn't watch the videos when we get back to class if they did not mark up their parts the way that I am telling you to right now then it's going to be super obvious they didn't watch these videos they didn't do their homework um, because they will be going the wrong direction so hopefully everybody does get this memo don't cheat and tell your friends make sure they just like tell them to watch the video and they'll get it um so now on to just a little bit of note discussion um measure 22 now we're getting into the theme low two low two is way back here by your first finger if this is high two up here on the tape low two is not just slightly behind the tape. It's way back here by your first finger. Check out how much space there is. It's almost a finger's width of space between low two and high two. Um, so make sure that you're not throwing your finger down somewhere in no man's land. Uh, if it lands somewhere in between C, uh, B flat and B natural, it's a wrong note. So make sure that low two is super low. And 23, high three. It would be up here next to your fourth finger if you had your fourth finger down, which you totally should, because 22 said to go open one, two, three, four, two, four, so that you know exactly where high three is in the world. What an idea. So remember that 23 is just the same three, one, three, three, one, three. It's the same fingering and then you just shift it down a half step. High three, first finger on the tape, high three. Now we slide back to third finger on the tape, low one, third finger on the tape. I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, measure 26, now we're doing it the octave higher, so we've got a B flat up here. Um, it's low one, low, all low first fingers live back here by the nut. This, uh, this little piece here that has grooves that your strings are coming through, this is the nut. This is where a low first finger is, not somewhere just behind the first finger tape. This is B natural, this is B flat, E natural, E flat. Um, so make sure that in 26, you are playing a low one and reaching for your third finger all the way up on the tape. 27, I think probably the easiest thing for you guys, uh, it was, would just be to play it in first position. Third position is technically the easier fingering, but since you guys aren't super comfortable with third position yet, um, I wouldn't recommend it. I would rather you have a better chance at getting the right notes and having like a clumsier <laughs> bowing than playing the wrong notes in favor of a, um, a slightly simpler fingering. So 27 is C sharp, open A, C sharp, low two, um, <laughs> sorry, it, it's hard for me to, to see these things. Uh, low two, low four, A flat, low two. So make sure that your low four is, um, is down here by your third finger and it's not just kind of a I didn't make it to the fourth finger tape for it's a fourth finger that's back here by your third finger um, 
Alternatively, if you are getting super comfortable with third position, um, you could shift up on beat four of measure 26. You go three, one, one on the D. And now remember that A natural is, is your second finger. It'll be on the tape. C sharp is a high fourth finger. So it is two whole steps away from A. C sharp, A, C sharp, C natural, A flat, C natural. See, this keeps it all on the same string so you don't have string crossings, but getting up there and <laughs> finding C sharp and A flat can be really tricky unless you are really comfortable in third position. So don't stress. Um, onwards, measures 34 and 35. Um, you've got a normal first finger on the E string, F sharp, that is on the tape. Measure 35, B flat, super high B flat, low four. Four, one, four, three, one, three, and measure 35. So make sure that you're getting comfortable with um, low fourth finger in this piece. 46, uh, this is the double stroke section. Use small bows and try to activate more wrist action if you can, because if you try to use a whole lot of bow for these fortissimo double strokes, you're just gonna get behind, which is what's happening right now. So the best thing that you can do is to keep the bow short on the string and compact. Sorry, B flat. So just keeping it all here and using more of this motion rather than just trying to like fly away. Um, measure 50, this has been a thorn in my side since the first time I heard you play it. B flat and G natural. It says to be C, but this is possible to be playing both notes at the same time and that's fine only if you play the right notes. B flat back here by the nut. G natural, let me make sure I'm getting it. G natural is just slightly above the first finger tape. This is a whole step spread between your fingers, right? Half step, whole step, half step, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's a spread, there is space here. Um, I don't know who is the guilty party uh, in this situation, but I'm like consistently hearing, I think I'm hearing B naturals is what's happening because it's turning from, from minor to, to the major tonality, which is totally incorrect. Um, so make sure that you are playing B flat and G natural, you're playing the right notes, or just pick one note. If you were that person who just is playing both notes and it is never sounding right, pick one note get that note correct, and once you are playing one note consistently correct, maybe you can add back in the other note as long as you can play that consistently correct as well. <sighs> Measure 60. Um, please do this DVC for at least two beats. Um, it'll help with the drop in dynamic, this subido piano, this like surprise piano here in measure 60, if you divide it and then as you get louder on these notes, and these seven notes, um, add in the second note. So go ahead and start. Because uh, once you start playing both notes, it's gonna sound louder and if everybody adds in both notes and it's gonna get super loud. Um, so please, please, please go to VC and measure 60 so that you can catch that subido piano really easily. Now, you've got two bars of rest. Do not put your instrument down. Do not put your bow down. Do not relax. Two bars goes by extremely quickly when you're going 190 beats per minute or more, maybe Maybe you've gotten faster since measure 42. I don't know, maybe you're going 200, 210 beats per minute by now. 
these two bars are going to fly by. They're gonna happen so fast that all I want you to do is to stay in playing position after you've played all of your loud notes, get your bow set, one, and then you are just, you are already there, pressed, set, and engaged, waiting for the last note. Um, that way everybody can play it loud. You've got two bars to make sure that you're gonna be playing the right notes. A very short two bars, but make sure that your notes are right, make sure your bow is set, and then you can just pull it and it's gonna be awesome, and it's gonna be loud, and it's gonna be beautiful. Um, but if you relax during those two bars because you see a multi-measure rest, then it's very likely that you're not gonna get up and set in time to play the last note. And you're gonna be scrambling and it's just not gonna look good or professional. So please do not relax in those two bars of rest. Uh, <laughs> And that's all I have um, for Hall of the Mountain King. So please check out the play along videos. These are structured a little differently from the other like slow tempo, fast tempo, performance tempo play along videos because this is supposed to be getting faster the whole time. I just picked a middle of the road tempo to do the recording at and then I go back and I'm gonna play um, the ending at the goal tempo. Um, that's the only way I could figure out how to do it unless I got a fancy metronome app and learned how to program it to do in a cello rondo, but I've got a metronome app that I like and it does not have that function and that is totally fine with me. We're just gonna, <laughs> we'll just do it the way that we're gonna do it and you, you're you gonna have to watch Carney to get, um, to get the cello rondo as she gets faster anyway because she may not always speed up and hit the milestones the way that she wrote them out in her score so um enjoy the play along videos play along with the other parts see how they fit together um and that's that's really all i've got so happy practicing see you in the next video um and I, I hope this was beneficial. <laughs> See you in class.